Thank you and good morning. Um, what I'd like to do is just to cover a couple of things and uh, to show you what I think is the outcomes of overweight donors and uh, most of this information I'm going to show you is actually unpublished. It's currently in press and kind of show you what the true risk is and I think uh, probably this is uh, information that's not available where you see a 40 year follow up of, uh, of, uh, of this issue. I think. So what are, what are the concerns when you think about the obese kidney donor? Well, I think this is what you read in the literature and this is what we all say, is that obesity is associated with hyperfiltration. Obesity is associated with uh, CKD and end-stage renal disease. Obesity is associated with diabetes and hypertension. And I think this, this bullet here is, I think, the most important one. I think a lot of people, as we discussed yesterday, are convinced that if you have diabetes and hypertension, it might be much worse in the setting of one kidney versus two kidneys. Uh, and in addition, a lot of people feel and believe in hyperfiltration from diabetes and obesity may actually make things worse in the remaining kidney. Certainly, uh, the obese patient uh, offers uh, surgical complications are higher, but we do open heart surgery and obese patients, we do colectomies, we do all kinds of major surgery. So I'm not a surgeon, but I think the surgeons would have a different opinion about this. I think one issue that doesn't come up in the discussion, which uh, renal cell cancer is actually three to four times higher in overweight uh, people, especially women and especially smokers. And interestingly, this is probably of all these bullet points the last one is the one that has data to support it, the concern about renal cell cancer, rather than any of these above uh, in here. And I'll, I'll come to that in a minute. So this is what we tell patients when we see them or donors, why we don't like obese donors or overweight donors. Uh, but what are the facts? Well, the facts are this, I think. The link between obesity and CKD uh, comes from observational studies. And observational studies, they do not provide facts. They don't provide uh, evidence be beyond doubt that they actually cause. Uh, and, and as you know, there's a lot of people who say obesity is associated with uh, end-stage kidney disease. Well, let me ask you, how many times you've seen patients with end-stage kidney disease and you say, well, I think obesity is what caused your kidney disease. Have you ever done that? somebody with no diabetes or hypertension. So I think people overestimate this, and I'm not sure what the right way to approach it. But I think it's, it's very clear, at least from our data, and I hope others can confirm it, is that neither diabetes nor, nor hypertension uh, has a worse outcome in people with one kidney. And we have many examples of this. Transplant recipients with diabetes and hypertension, they have one kidney. Their course is not exa exaggerated. Uh, we, we, we haven't published this, but we have access now to 64,000 people who had uninephrectomy for cancer, and they don't have more aggressive kidney disease than people uh, with one, uh, two kidneys. We have some data on trauma patients and uh, U.S. Army soldiers who lost one kidney, and they developed diabetes, and they don't seem to be uh, at high risk. But I think this is what I'd like us to, to focus on. Uh, one out of four is overweight. That's, I think, the reality. I don't know what the numbers are in Egypt are, but this is in the U.S., which immediately means you're excluding, if you were to stick to these convictions about obesity and overweight, 25% of people are immediately not candidates for life donation. And if you add from the previous stocks, the HLA incompatibles and the ABO incompatible, which is a 35% chance in a group of 100 people, so you're immediately saying 60% of people cannot donate kidneys, and I think we should think about that. So let me show you what, what people publish and talk about, and uh, this is a kind of interesting uh, paper where we looked at short-term outcomes of obese kidney donors. Uh, what's interesting about this paper, they looked at the recipients uh, as well, and uh, this is uh, from the UNOS data database, and you can see BMI less than 25. BMI less than 35 or more than 35. And it just asks a simple question, uh, what is the length of stay? Uh, how many of them needed open nephrectomy, reoperations, readmissions, conversion to open surgery, et cetera? And, and at least from this national database, it doesn't seem that 
uh, operation uh, on obese donors uh, carries a higher surgical mortality. So I think this is uh, important. Now, if you look at uh, what happens into uh, the recipient uh, outcome, uh, the recipient does well regardless what kind of kidney they got. So I think that's an important thing uh, to note that a kidney from an obese donor does as well as a kidney from a non-obese donor. Uh, this looks, uh, again, this is again all recipients. Delayed graft function was not different if you got a kidney from an obese donor, acute rejection, etc. So there is no issues with the recipient receiving a kidney uh, from a larger size uh, donor. This shows you uh, systolic blood pressure pre and post donation of like kidney donor by BMI status. And again, uh, obviously, this is six-month data. It's not very relevant. But you can see that the blood pressure uh, doesn't uh, change much, uh, even in the BMI above 35. Systolic blood pressure pre and post donation becomes less. In fact, if you notice the uh, intervals, the interquartile range, the blood pressure actually becomes less. And as you know, there's some papers from the main clinic from 15 years ago that showed some hypertension in kidney donors actually is cured by donating, uh, which is very interesting. Uh, this is, so how many people here, if you have somebody with a BMI of 35, say, I'll, I'd like you to lose the weight before you donate? How many people insist on weight loss? And I think that's what most of us uh, do. Uh, let me just show you, this is, uh, from Greg Knoll in Ottawa, looking at how body weight changes before and after kidney donation. Uh, so they had uh, normal BMI, 113 donors with, uh, who had uh, a class two or more uh, obesity. And what they did, they just looked at how your uh, weight changes from the time your initial assessment, the time of kidney donation, and at last follow. And I think the important ones are the green and the red. And you can see the green and the red, this is BMI about 30 up to 40. This is at the time of donation. This is uh, at the time of assessment. This is the time of donation. This is roughly eight years out. So what you, what you see is that we do take some obese donors at the time, when they come to transplant or donation, actually their weight has gone up. And at last follow-up, their weight goes up. Which is, I think, similar to what happens in all of us. I think as you get older, your BMI goes up. So this is uh, not surprising. But the point of this, I think when we insist, so this is the group that probably we insisted on them losing weight, they lost the weight, uh, they were able to donate, but eventually they went back. So I think when you ask kidney donors to lose the weight, uh, I personally think you're just making yourself feel better. It has nothing to do with them. You're making yourself feel better that they've lost the weight, but eventually they will put the weight back on. And I'll show you more of this data. Uh, how much weight did they gain from initial ass assessment? Uh, they start 62 kilos, uh, last fall of 62. But the overall group, uh, the weight gain is roughly uh, around 2 kilos, which is actually not bad. So a lot of people lose the weight to donate, but at, when they do, after they donate, they gain all that weight back. Now, the weight that they gain back doesn't bother you because you don't see them. The weight that bothers you is when you see them. So I think there's a kind of a strange psychology in this. I want you to be fit at the time I see you for donation, but what happens to you afterwards, nobody really focuses on, which I think is this, is a strange, strange thing. Let me show you, this is a paper we published a couple of years ago before I moved, looking at weight gain after kidney donation. And, you know, just weight gain in anybody is actually associated with type 2 diabetes and hypertension. And that was actually true in people who donated kidneys. Uh, this is a really busy slide. Um, but this is, if you had a pre-donation BMI, I want you to focus on this part. More than 30, and we asked you to lose the weight, and now your donation BMI is less than 30. 
So this is the only paper that actually tells you about the, the course of kidney donors who've lost the weight so they're able to donate. Um, and this is, I think, what, what happens to be in line with age. I actually tried, I found data from the WHO and the weight gain in kidney donors is, is exactly what you see in, in the general population, so they don't seem to be any different. But again, as we all get older, I think most of us are gain weight. Complications were not higher uh, in people with a pre-donation BMI more than uh, 30. Uh, hypertension uh, was certainly higher. But again, this rate of hypertension, again, every time you say obesity is associated with more hypertension, more diabetes and kidney donors, it, 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 it's not more than people with two kidneys. It's just higher than people who don't develop it. So always please put it in perspective of what you're referring to and what the comparison group is. Uh, this is the uh, predictive factors at time of donation for weight gain, uh, age, if you started with a higher DMI, and when I tended to uh, not uh, gain as much weight. Uh, this is the multivariate analysis, or at least half of it, oh, here you go. Uh, showing risk of hypertension was higher, risk of diabetes was higher, CVD, proteinuria, reduced GFR, and uh, actually, if you look at that, they were actually somehow protected uh, from that. Uh, so I think it's safe to say that kidney donors were overweight, uh, lose the weight and donate, they gain the weight back, and this weight gain is associated with diabetes and hypertension, but the impact of overweight in the setting of one kidney is the same exact impact as somebody with two kidneys. Uh, this is the paper, I think, uh, uh, that got a lot of attention. It's in a, uh, Jenny Locke, who's a good friend. She showed that, and I think it's titles like this that actually scares people in life donation. When the title of the paper increases the risk of end-stage renal disease among living kidney donors, I think the immediate impression that it gives is that they are certain that obesity increases the risk of, of kidney as if obesity is causally related to this. And, I'll, and, and it's, it's a very well done paper. Uh, so uh, this is not in these 58,000. But look at this, when you ask colleagues in the community and everybody would say, well, I don't take people BMI more than 30. Look how many people have taken BMI more than 30. So I think we say it out in public, but when we go to clinic, we allow people to donate for more than uh, 30. But let me show you. Uh, so this is the risk of end-stage kidney disease at five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. This is um, per 10,000. So if you're obese, your risk is 93.9 per 10,000. So that's nine per thousand. If you're not obese, your risk is four per thousand. Okay, so when, when you have a, a title of a paper that it says your relative risk of end-stage kidney disease is twice higher, it sounds really scary, right? But the fact is, it's four versus nine per thousand at 10 years. And that's the reality. So I think we need to start thinking about relative risk versus absolute risk. Uh, this is the adjusted analysis. So if, you, if you're obese, you're 86% more likely to develop kidney failure. But again, if your baseline risk is three in a thousand, 86% of that is two more, so it's five in a thousand. So again, I'd like you to start thinking about this differently in relative terms, and in absolute terms rather than relative. And of course, you know, you could, you could look at this graph. And this is an important point. So if you don't like taking people with BMI as kick, uh, 40 as kidney donors, you have to realize that up to 10 years and 12 years is absolutely no difference. So if you have a 60-year-old with a BMI of 40, he, they could live easily till age 70 and 75 with the same exact risk. 
Now, you can view this differently. If you're 20 years old and you're going to live for 50 years, then the impact of overweight might be different. So I think this is what needs to be factored in. But there's zero impact and the risk of kidney failure in the first 10 to 12 years. And I think this is a, should be important in selection. Um, let me end with uh, this data, because I always run out of time. Uh, this is unpublished data. It's currently pressed. Looking at 9,000 donors, and we just looked at people with BMI less than 30, BMI more than 30, and the follow-up. Uh, some of these people have followed 40 years. Uh, the complete data was available in 561, and complete data on 3,000. Uh, and this is the distribution. And you can immediately see uh, we were more conservative in the past. And I think with more time, you can see the red portion, which is BMI more than 30, currently makes 25% uh, of all donors. So I think we're getting uh, braver or stupid. I'm not sure, but one of the two. Uh, so let me show you uh, if, uh, the outcome. Death was not difference in the these donors. This is multiple regression. Cardiovascular disease was not different. Uh, obese donors were three times more likely to develop diabetes, and so does obese people in the general population. They were more likely to develop hypertension. The risk of proteinuria was not different. The risk of end-stage renal disease was uh, not different. This is uh, doing uh, uh, multiple uh, logistic regression to because we didn't have follow-up time on some of the people, so we just took everyone at last follow -up. And in this, again, you see more hypertension, more diabetes. In this case, we saw more proteinuria and actually more ESRD, which is similar to what JD shows. So there's no question that overweight is associated with diabetes and hypertension uh, and possibly, possibly with uh, end-stage kidney disease. So I think my summary of, of, of this information and uh, other papers that I can show you, if you take uh, every single paper published in the U.S., including ours, the relative risk of end-stage renal disease is twice higher than people uh, who are not overweight. So roughly nine, nine in a thousand compared to four in a thousand. Uh, so if you deny a thousand people with BMI more than uh, 30 to donate, you're basically denying 993 because they're overweight, because you're concerned about these nine. And I think we need to think about very seriously. But this is the striking thing. This is uh, Dory's uh, and I did that a few years ago. For each five unit increase in BMI, the relative risk of ESRD increases by 30%. So if your risk is four, four in a thousand and your BMI goes from 30 to 35 or 35 to 40, this makes it five in a thousand. So each five units of BMI, this is the impact. It's trivial. It's absolutely trivial. I think most donors, donors do lose the weight but gain it back. So as I said before, I think it makes us feel better when we see them at the time of surgery and the week after but not many of us see the donors a year or two or 20 or 30 after. If we exclude overweight donors, hypertensive donors, donors with impaired fasting, glucose, diabetics, I think we'll be limiting the donor pool quite significantly and I think we have to think about a very thoughtful way and hopefully more research to help us with these difficult donors. Uh, I personally believe uh, we need, if you have a recipient uh, and a donor who you consider marginal, I think we need to create a program where you bring the donor and the recipient in, have a, a terrific nutritional program, exercise program, behavioral program for three, six months, because I think it, the donor will get encouraged by, with the recipient. And if you put both of them in a very good program, diet and exercise, I think that will make a, a huge uh, difference. And I think that's where, you know, people invest uh, $50,000 and HLA incompatibles, you know, with all the testing and the desensitization. But we don't spend $200 to help people with an exercise program and a nutritional program. But everybody gets excited about HLA and compatible transplants and 
that this problem, which is 100 times bigger than HLA incompatibility, 1,000 times bigger than ABO incompatibility, gets zero attention. And I think it's, it's just not sexy, so I think that's what happens. I'll stop with this, uh, and I'd be happy to take uh, questions. Thank you.